Hi, I welcome you again to Leadership Solutions. This is a platform where I discuss principles for effective leadership. During the last episode, I shared with you uh, the concept of leadership and we, we, we studied Jesus' concept of leadership. Jesus is a leader of leaders and it showed to us that leadership is sought. Sort refers to integrity or godly character. I concluded during last episode that no integrity, no leadership. Anyone who does not have integrity can never provide effective leadership anytime, anywhere. Today, I want to consider another concept of leadership. I believe God is raising new generation of leaders. And you are very, very relevant to this agenda of God. Because God wants to turn things around in our situation, in our society. So he's raising new leaders. That is why I am out to encourage and to teach about leadership. And I believe that as you are with me, God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. Now, last episode, we talked about leadership being Influence. That is a definition by Oswald Sanda. I said leadership is influence, which is very correct. Uh, also, John Maxwell said everything rises and falls on leadership. That means leadership is important everywhere and every time. The Holy Spirit told me one time that whether things are good or bad, leadership is the way forward. If, I, if my life is going to get better, my leadership has to change. If church, if a local church wants to get better, the leadership of that church must change. Leadership, everything rises and falls on leadership. And whether things are good or bad, leadership is the way forward. How do you see leadership? What do you think about leadership? Please, I welcome your comment, the comment uh, space down below. I want to hear comment from you. Now, I want to continue to study the concept of leadership as Jesus presented it unto the early disciples. Why am I doing this? Jesus himself is the leader of leaders. He's the greatest leader of all leaders that had ever been on the service of the earth. He is the one who spent only three years or three and a half years to do all his works and after everything to today the world is yet to recover from his influence all over the world so we need to learn from him and because he brought the kingdom of god onto the world and for us to be relevant in the agenda of god we must actually learn from him and plug ourselves into his system and live and live our life according to his pattern and his principles so we may provide effective leadership anytime, anywhere. I will take you back to the scriptures, Matthew chapter 5. Last episode, I read verse 13. I want to begin to read from verse 14 in this episode. Jesus continued, he said, You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to anyone, to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, in this episode, we are seeing that Jesus is saying leadership is light. That is Jesus' concept of leadership. We first said leadership is salt. In this episode, we are saying leadership is light. Why was Jesus, why did Jesus use light to illustrate leadership? Like salt, salt is very influential. 
light is equally influential. In fact, light is so influential that we cannot do anything tangible without light. Do you see that leadership is very, very vital? Leadership is very, very important. And that is why, indeed, I have a deep passion for leadership. And if you can get leadership right, every other thing will be right. Now, let's start this way. What is light all about? I will share three qualities of light with you for us to understand what Jesus is talking about when he is thinking, he was talking about leadership. Number one, light reveals. Now, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city or a town that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, the original audience of Jesus understood the statement of Jesus very well. Why? Now, in those days, people built cities or towns beside the hill or even on top of the hills. And people, when people travel, people travel late. It's not the time when they were using cars and airplanes. It was a time when people travel on their feet or travel on, on donkeys and they may travel for days before they will arrive at their destination. So when they are traveling and the day is closing and it's getting dark and they look afar and they are looking for a way to rest, the moment they see light afar off, that will give them a sense that a town is nearby. It, it will show to them that they are close to human settlement. And so that is what light does. And that is why Jesus told them a city that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. And that is what leadership is all about. Leadership is about revealing hidden realities, unknown possibilities. Light is very important. And leadership is light. When you get correct leadership anywhere, what that leadership will do is it will reveal hidden realities it will open up unknown possibilities. In our state today, in Nigerian state in particular, there are so many potentials that are not developed. There are so many possibilities that we don't know anything about. Why? Because we are yet to have the kind of leadership that we, that we, that we want. We are yet to have the kind of leadership that will bring all of that in place. Let's get a correct leader. We see unlimited possibilities. In fact, leadership is the instrument God uses to maximize potentials, to ma maximize possibilities, to bring about hidden realities. So light reveals. Light reveals the way things ought to be done. Light reveals. The second quality of light is light guides. A city on a hill, the travelers, the moment they look, they see, they see light ahead. It guides them and shows them the way to follow, to, to enter into a human community. Light deals with ignorance by guiding in the path of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Indeed, light symbolizes knowledge. It symbolizes wisdom. It symbolizes understanding. Now, when light comes, wisdom comes. Indeed, light guides against errors. So light is very important. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, is a very serious leadership matter. Leadership is light. Number three, light empowers. Light gives excitement to the soul. In Nigeria, especially, where we don't have regular electricity supply. Electricity supply may, may, may be off for hours, in fact, for days sometimes. And when electricity supply comes, we are people, children, we shout, Hop Nepal! In those days, Hop Nepal! So, now, why? People get excited when there is light. What is the secret behind it? Light gives excitement to the soul. 
In fact, even in agriculture, in plants, light exerts energy inside plants. And with that, the plant is able to produce food. And what they call photosynthesis takes place because of light. Photosynthesis can never take place without light. So light empowers. Light is a source of power. So leadership, when we say leadership, is light is a powerful thing. It's a powerful concept. Leadership is light. What are the implications of this truth that I'm talking about? Uh, number one, light refers, ultimately, light refers to competence. What is competence? Competence is the state of having sufficient knowledge, sufficient skill, or sufficient strength for a particular duty. In this world, in our society, we need people who are competent. Many people occupy leadership positions, whereas they are not competent. The nations of the world, the nations that are advancing, that are moving forward, one important factor for their success is they have competent people in, in, in leadership positions. In Africa, and in Nigeria in particular, many people who occupy leadership positions are not actually competent. They don't actually have the ability to deliver the promises they have made unto people. And that is why people are crying in our society because many people who occupy leadership positions are not competent. And let me tell you, no one can provide effective leadership without having competence in relevant aspect of human endeavor. You want to occupy a position and you are not competent about what that position demands. You cannot be an effective leader. And that is the problem. Now, my friend, one thing, another thing you must watch in your life is you must develop competence. What is your chosen area of career? What is what is your career? What is your area of interest? Interest? Are you competent in it? If you are not competent, you cannot be. You cannot provide effective leader. You cannot provide effective leadership. Now, what is the way of competence? How can we grow competence? How can we, how can you become competent in your chosen field, in your chosen area of career? Now, number one, the first key to growing competence is through learning. Learning. If you don't have hunger for learning, you cannot grow. If you don't have passion for learning, you cannot grow. Indeed, I appreciate you for watching this video, that you are watching this video means that you have passion for learning, you want to learn more about leadership. Do you know that there are many people in leadership position who don't really know what leadership is all about? And that is why we are where we are today in Africa and in Nigeria in particular. Many of our people don't love learning. They don't have passion for learning. If you ask from some people, do you love reading books? They say, no, I don't love reading books. The moment somebody finishes first degree in the university, eh, in the university, he say, yes, thank God, Mubo, I'm free. Now, I'm, I'm not interested in reading, reading, If you don't have passion for reading, you don't have passion for personal development, you cannot be competent. Go and study the biographies of great leaders in the United States of America, in the UK, you do discover that these men who provide solid leadership are learners, life, life learners. They learn, they seek for knowledge from time to time. Number two, the second key to developing competence is hard work. You must be hard working. Hard work is when you put the knowledge you gather into action, into work. And many people are lazy. They don't enjoy work. They just 
like to sit down, collect money, and uh, at the end of the month, hard work is another key to be competent. And the third key is God's grace. Grace, the grace of God. In the book of John chapter 1, uh, verse 16, John, John the Baptist was talking about Jesus. He said, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. He was speaking on behalf of all the leaders who had risen before him. He was talking about men like Enoch, men like Noah, men like Abraham, Moses, and all the prophets. He said, the secret behind their exploit, the secret behind their leadership success is grace that comes from Jesus. God's grace is a major key to competence. When you are able to contact the grace of God for leadership, if you occupy a position today, you need the grace of God. The grace of God will help you to be competent. You love learning, you are hardworking, then you need the grace of God. And the grace of God comes by asking for it. Pray to God. God, give me grace for this leadership responsibility. God, give me grace. And as you ask for grace, God is, is kind. God is merciful. He usually gives grace unto anyone who asks for it. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. So when you place demand for grace, it will surely give you grace <laughs> for leadership. Leadership without grace is going to be affliction. You will provide toxic leadership onto people. If you, do, if you lack grace in the leadership position that you occupy. My friend, this is another concept of leadership. Leadership is light. When you, con you develop your competence, you will be able to deliver and provide effective leadership. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Now, God wants your light to shine before people. God wants people to see your leadership and be very happy and be very excited. God wants people to be blessed through your leadership anytime, anywhere. In the coming episode, I will still be talking about principles for effective leadership. Remember to touch the subscribe button if you have not subscribed before and touch the notification bell so you may receive notification and each time I upload my new video. God bless you as you continue to provide effective leadership everywhere you go. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next episode.